The first rule of Moxie is if you love Moxie, you love Moxie. If you don't like Moxie, you don't like it. Now, if you're a bartender, a cocktail aficionado, or someone who embraces aromatic bitters, then Moxie is probably the soda for you because it does include gentian root. Now, gentian root, for those that know, is incorporated into a lot of Amari and or aromatic bitters to give it a uh, bitter, well, a subtle bitterness that helps balance out the sweetness of soda. So if you're into soda history and you wanna learn more about how to make moxies, this is a video for you, so stick around. I'm gonna show you how to make moxie. I'm Darcy O'Neill, this is Art of Drink. Uh, today we're talking moxie. Now moxie is a northeastern soda, you know, associated with Maine. It's actually the state's official soda. The thing that makes it different is that, as I mentioned in the intro, it's slightly bitter. To some people, it's a lot bitter. Now, I don't find it that bitter, but you can, after this video, vary it. Now, if you're into bartending or a bartender and you want to add some non-alcoholic drinks to your menu, and this is an excellent uh, example of a soda that has the bitterness of a cocktail or some cocktails, and it also has no alcohol. Now the history of Moxie's goes back to about 1884 with a Augustine Thompson. Now he had been making medicines uh, since the mid 1870s, but Moxie really came about in 1884. And I'm not gonna go into great detail on this. I have actually a long form written article on Art of Drink that'll be publishing along with this video, link below, uh, that will get into all the details, but Originally, Moxie's had cocaine and strychnine in it. The thing is, is that at that period in time, they didn't really think it was that bad. They kind of equated it to a cup of coffee. Now, Thompson uh, denied this, though there was a number of analysis back then that confirmed it. And if you look at a lot of the old recipes for nerve tonics, that's what Thompson called these, uh, they contained cocaine and strychnine. Now again, cocaine at that time, 18, early 1800s, was considered something equivalent to the caffeine in coffee. Strychnine was a little more potent, but again, in the small amounts that they were using this, it just basically perked people up. Now, they were addictive, and people did get addicted to them. And an example of that is that Moxie was selling 27,000 bottles per week in about 1885. Now that's Coca-Cola with cocaine sales. Now the medical community was not impressed with Thompson. He wasn't actually a doctor, though he called himself the doctor. He was a homeopath and he made wild claims, not because it contained strychnine or cocaine, but because the magic ingredient, according to Thompson, was oatmeal. Avena sativa was the magic ingredient. Obviously, this is an oat extract. That's what he claimed gave Moxie its superpower. We know today it was strychnine and cocaine. He pulled those things out once the medical community got wind of that. There was an, analys an analysis done by Bonham, who was a pharmacist and a soda fountain operator, and he included this analysis. Now, the one thing people, you don't see any of this in the history uh, other than the medical history. But the reality is, is you're not gonna confuse coca and strychnine with anything else when you're drinking it. But because of the medical pressure put on Thompson, he removed them, but he left the oats in. And he replaced the bitterness of those two alkaloids with uh, chinchona and eventually gentian. Now, moxie is just basically a bitter root beer. Its key ingredient is wintergreen today, but it also includes sassafras, back in the 1800s all the way up until 1960. Problem with sassafras is that the uh, FDA did some analysis. They kind of linked it to cancer, uh, kind of. And so in the 1960s, they pulled it. So a lot of root beers had to replace it. Now, I'm not sure what Moxie replaced it with. Sometimes you can kind of fiddle with the ingredients, including anise oil, wintergreen, and other, you know, camphor, sometimes mint. But you can make a different root beer 
with different ingredients. You don't need sassafras, though sassafras has a unique flavor. Basically back in the 1880s, there was probably half a dozen recipes. Again, you'll find those on Art of Drink with the historical, uh, the chronological history of that, showing you how Moxie evolved. But today, I'm just gonna show you how to make Moxie according to those old recipes. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It, there's nothing complicated about this. It's probably a great place for you to start on making sodas, though it does contain an extract and it does contain an essence. Now I've done both of those videos and luckily both of those videos, the essence one is on wintergreen and I believe cinnamon. And then the other one is on gentian root extract. It's like I planned it for this. Now it's really simple to make this recipe. Let me show you how to do it. So the core ingredients you're gonna need are wintergreen, some gentian extract, some caramel coloring, and some simple syrup. Now basically everything else is optional. What you see over here is an oat extract that I made. Now this is made according to the recipes for Moxie. Doesn't taste good. Uh, it's basically oatmeal, and literally oatmeal that uh, is moistened with a 5% solution of potassium hydroxide and then extracted with 40% to 50% alcohol. And it produces uh, a clear solution that has no real aroma. It's kind of got a bitter flavor to it. Uh, I've made a moxie with it and I'm gonna make this moxie and I'll be able to kind of compare. I don't think it's gonna actually make a difference. So I'm pretty sure this is absolutely optional because again, Thompson was a homeopath and he believed this had miracle cures for dipsomnia, which is drug addiction and alcohol addiction, loss of manhood or erectile dysfunction, nervous exhaustion. All of these medical claims were based on oat extract. For this, I basically just make up my simple syrup and this is a three to two simple syrup. And today we're calling it proxy syrup. I think proxy was a great name. It was actually a competitor or clone that was created back in the late 1800s. And instead of calling themselves Moxie, they called themselves proxy. Moxie promptly sued, uh, proxy lost. And so I wouldn't recommend making a proxy syrup and selling it on the market. But if you have it behind the bar, uh, because you're not actually making prop Moxie proper, you know, call it proxy. Uh, but uh, I doubt Moxie will sue, but you never know. They're owned by Coke. Coke is fairly litigious, but I don't think they'll care on a basis of this. So we need 15 mils of wintergreen. Now, one of the things I'm doing is I'm adding a little anise oil, and I'm going to add two mils of it. Winter green on its own is a little bit, you know, a singular flavor. So I don't find it to be all that exciting, but a little bit of anise oil. And again, if you need to know how to make an essence, just check out the video that I link up here. It's pretty easy. All you need is like eight mils of anise oil in 120 mils of alcohol. Uh, and then you'll end up uh, being able to pour it straight into there. And it does go cloudy as usual. Once we shake it, that will clear up. Now for this, we need about 15 mils. You can, if you want it more bitter, you can add a little more, uh, go up to 20 mils, but the gentian extract, again, you can check out the extract video and it will give you a guide on it. And then caramel syrup. Now I make my own, again, I've done a video on this. Uh, the, re the reason I did the original three or four videos on extracts, tinctures, essences, and caramel is because it basically is used in all of these sodas. So if you have questions, check out those videos first and then post them below. Now you'll need basically one ounce of caramel coloring. Uh, this kind of just makes the color look better, but it also does help keep oils in solution. Now, 
the modern Moxies actually has caffeine in it. So I've measured out one gram. That's about what you would use in this. And that'll give you 35 milligrams per ounce. So if you're going to put in some caffeine, now's the time to do it. And if there's a little left over in the bottom, that is fine. So caffeine powder, and that's about it. You can add cinnamon, you can add any other flavor you want to this. That is completely up to you. Uh, I will be doing a video on root beer shortly, and it will explain all the different components for root beer. And that will allow you to kind of fill out the flavor to how you like it. And I really think from a non-alcoholic or a low alcohol uh, version, uh, starting with these types of products like Moxie uh, is a great way to go, especially in the modern world where we're you know, more accepting of bitter flavors. This is something that I think people should try. Now again, you just give it a good shake. Now the reason for this one being lighter is I used a lighter caramel coloring. Uh, I'm not so, you don't necessarily need the really darkness anymore. Um, it used to help keep everything in solution. I'm kind of leaning more towards these light syrups, but it's up to you. If you want to use dark caramel syrup, go for it. Again, I made mine really dark in this one. Uh, so in the video, you'll see I go to red. That's the color this gives you with one ounce. And I went really dark with this one, which gives you a much more cola color. So it's all up to you on how you want to do it. Now, you basically need your standard eight ounce glass. There is no acid in here, so you will need to add some in a second. But Angostura bitters was called for in a number of the recipes. They would actually just add it to this, but I add it separately. This just rounds out the flavor because again, just winter green is such a mono flavor, it's just winter green. So the bitters, you can use any bitters, uh, will kind of round out all those flavors. So I just add a couple dashes. You'll also need acid phosphate or any acid. You put lime juice in there you want, but typically phosphoric acid or dilute phosphoric acid or acid phosphate, which is very similar. Uh, just has salts in it to buffer it and make the flavor a little bit better is probably what you want to use. Uh, Modern Moxie does use phosphoric acid and citric acid. If you use citric acid, it'll come out fine. It's just going to change the flavor a bit. It's going to have a little more of a citrus flavor, whereas acid phosphate is basically a neutral flavor, so you're not going to have to worry about it. And you're going to add about a teaspoon. Then what you need to do is add one to one and a half ounces of your Moxie's syrup. Now I add a little more than an ounce, just because modern tastes tend to be more flavorful. Like we, historically they used a lot less sugar than what we do today. So if you're trying to get between the old recipes and modern taste profiles, always use a quarter ounce to half ounce more for these sodas. I just carefully add this because you don't want to overdo it. And then you can grab a bar spoon. And that is your Moxie. Now I'll say that is pretty good. That's, it's got the bitterness, it's got the aromatics from the Angostura, and it does have that root beer flavor. Now this may be a little more complex than Moxie is today, just because of the Angostura bitters in it. But if you want a bitter soda that is not too sweet and pleasant, this is the way to go. Uh, make your proxy syrup, I'm pretty sure people are going to be happy with this. It's, it's not cloyingly sweet and that bitterness. If you're used to drinking Negronis or any bitter cocktails and you don't feel like having alcohol, this is definitely a drink that a lot of people will enjoy.
yeah, I say make it. So if you want to know more about this, check out the post on artofdrink.com. Uh, it will go through all the history and it gives you variations on the recipe that they used to use. If you want, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them down below. I will try to answer them if I can. Uh, but again, if it's about technique, please watch the other videos first because they will answer a lot of your questions. And again, this is just a starting point for you. Feel free to add all the flavors that you want. Again, you don't have to do wintergreen or root beer. You can do any flavor. And we're going to get that into the future. Please feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.